Well, God, it's good to be with you once again to have the opportunity to open God's word together. And so we want to look once again at Christ's blessing on his disciples, the blessings that he pronounces in the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5. And we've been meditating on that particular blessing that comes to uh, the peacemakers. And so uh, we want to look at that once again. So again, to get our context in mind and to see how Jesus has built these blessings one on top of another, uh, we want to look together at Matthew chapter 5, beginning at verse 1 and reading through verse 9. So let's pay careful attention for this is God's own word. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Uh, Thus far, the reading of God's word, may he bless it to us. Well, last time as we were going along and thinking about these things, we we were starting to go a little bit long, and um, I didn't want to make these devotionals go for too long. Um, I'm shooting for about 10 minutes, so we went a little long last time, um, and we didn't leave as much time to think about what it means for us to be peacemakers. Uh, One of the things I want to be clear about, Jesus is pronouncing these blessings on his disciples uh, for who they are in Christ. Um, And so the purpose of the Beatitudes is to say, you are blessed as a peacemaker. That's what God has made you um, in his image. That's how he's refashioned you in Christ. That's who you are as his disciple, and Jesus is pronouncing that blessing over you. Um, And so that's a a real wonderful thing to recognize that This passage in particular is not calling for us uh, to be peacemakers. It's pronouncing the blessing on those who are peacemakers. Uh, But I thought as we're thinking about what it means to be a peacemaker and the priority for peacemaking that God gives us, it is good for us to look elsewhere in Scripture and to recognize just how much of a priority is put on peace. Um, One of the things that we find when we look at the scriptures is that the scriptures put a high priority on peace. Um, Not only on peace that God came to make by the blood of Christ, which we've thought about before, um, but also the peace that we are called to pursue as God's people. Um, And I think it is worth thinking about what scripture has to say more broadly about being peacemakers. So even though this text isn't really to calling us to, to be peacemakers, it's not a passage primarily of the law, it's primarily a passage of the gospel, uh, we, recognize as, we recognize as God's people that there are plenty of calls in the scripture to be peacemakers and calls that we should take seriously. Um, I think in a particular way because we live in such a uh, moment of broken peace in our culture. Um, in the way we relate to one another across party lines, the way we relate to one another um, through social media, which has in many ways made us antisocial, more antisocial is what the the studies show, that Christians could really stand out um, by following the commands that we find in the scripture to be people who make for peace. Um, I remember uh, hearing a comedian once say that, um, you know, social media is a place where you you find out who has problems with you. And he said, you know, the chief difference between Twitter and Facebook is that on Twitter, it's strangers telling you how much how many problems they have with you. Whereas on Facebook, it's people you know telling you that you're the worst. Um, and so, you know, it, it, it can be like that, that we, we see so much peace fractured in our culture Um, That when we look to our God and really see him as a peacemaking God, calling for his people to be a peacemaking people, um, we could really stand out in our culture uh, by living in this way. We could really be countercultural as God's people if we listen to the call repeatedly given in Scripture for God's people to pursue peace. And I thought I would write something up that'll be a little bit of a help to you. I'll see if I can put it up here on the screen. Um, But think of how often... Uh, peacemaking and peace and peacemaking are commended and commanded in the scriptures. Uh, so we can think of, of that description of Christ's mission in Luke 
179, that he came to guide our feet into the way of peace. Um, peace is an aspect of the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5. That a peaceful person is one who, who, in whom the Spirit of God is at work. Um, Colossians 3.15 tells us that the peace of Christ is to rule our hearts. Um, Christians are commanded to be at peace uh, repeatedly, right? Mark 9.50, 1 Thessalonians 5.13, 2 Peter 3, verse 14. We are to live peaceably with all as much as depends on us. Uh, we see that in Romans 12.18. We are to live in peace, uh, 2 Corinthians 13.11. Um, we are to seek peace and pursue it, 1 Peter 3.11. Pursue peace, 2 Timothy 2.22. Pursue what makes for peace, Romans 14.19. Strive for peace with everyone, Hebrews 12.14. Eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace, Ephesians 4.3. Um, our passage, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Um, and James 3, 17 through 18, talking about how do you know the wisdom that's from above? Uh, the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, and a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make for peace. Um, Fifteen books of the New Testament, uh, of the 27, specifically command and commend peace. Um, and so when we see those things in the New Testament, that's only the areas that specifically say peace. Uh, there are plenty of other, other passages that talk in other terms about it. But you see just what God wants from his people and how starkly that stands in contrast to the culture we see that's constantly stirring up division um, and constantly encouraging us to follow that same pattern, to be agitators. Um, and, and sometimes people even wear that as a badge of honor, that they're agitators. Um, and, and God is calling us repeatedly not to be agitators in that way, uh, that we are to try to make for peace. We are try, we're to try to be gentle. We're to try to be those who repair divisions as much as possible and who are never responsible for the fractures that develop as much as possible. Um, God wants that from his people. And obviously, we're not to do that at the expense of truth. Um, we're not to do that, at, you know, to have peace at any cost. Uh, that's not what the Bible calls for. Uh, but at the second time, at the same time, what I think is, what does our day call for? Um, there is a lot of people who are restless in this world. There's a lot of division. There's a lot of fracturing. And clearly the calling of Christians is not to be adding to that fracturing, specifically not amongst each other. And we have to try to do the best we can to live at peace with one another, first and foremost, and to do what we can to live at peace with our neighbors. Um, and that's really one of the blessings of uh, the reality of God's kingdom is that it's a kingdom of peace. You know, one of the blessings of being brought into this relationship with our God is that we have peace with God. We know that ultimately he will create a perfect peace between all of us, um, a peace that we're trying to maintain in this world. But we know that we're all sinners, that we all fall short in many ways, and we will never achieve that perfect peace in this transitory and imperfect age. But we're striving for it as God's people, and we strive for it in the hope that one day we will be perfectly at peace. That's the glory of the kingdom of God, is that it's a kingdom of peace. And God calls on his people to be peacemakers as much as we can, as much as we can without sinning, as much as we can um, in giving ourselves over to one another, as much as it depends on us, as God's word said. We should try to live at peace with people. Um, and that, I think, especially in an age of dissension and unrest, uh, that can really be a sweet savor in the, in the, even in the, in, the, in the nose of the world. It can be a wonderful thing that they see when they see us at peace in the midst of so much dissension. Um, and so even though this passage in front of us is not particularly about what it means calling us to be peacemakers, but more blessing peacemakers, there are plenty of other places in Scripture 
that call us to be peacemakers. That's what Jesus came to do, to guide our feet into the way of peace. And that's what we should strive for as much as we can, to, to go away from the cultural move to dissension and fracturing and to be citizens of the kingdom of heaven, which is a kingdom of peace. And we should try as much as we can to be at peace with each other. May God grant that spirit to prevail amongst us, that we would try our best to live at peace with one another. Let's ask God's help to do it, for we certainly need his grace and the help of the Holy Spirit if we're to do these things. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, would you send your Son and his Spirit in, in our hearts that we might have our feet guided into the way of peace? We confess, Lord, that too often we have chosen the route of dissension and fracturing and caused division where we should have caused wholeness. And Lord, we pray that you would help us to be people of peace, that we would show that wisdom that's from above, that is first pure and then peaceable, to be gentle, to be open to reason, to be full of mercy and good fruits, to want to show charity to neighbors so that we might come together, not be driven further apart. And one of the things that truly makes us heart sick in this world is to see how much division and dissension is continually stirred up. And how thankful we are for, for you sending your son into the world to bring a kingdom of peace. How we long for that peace in this world. How we long to be at peace with one another. Forgive us, Lord, for when we have sinned against you and, and caused division where we should have striven for peace. And Lord, we pray that you would put it on our hearts to be peacemakers and to strive to follow that example of our Lord Jesus Christ who came to make peace between us and you and to make peace with one another. Um, Lord, we, we pray that you would prepare us even now for that kingdom of peace that's coming and that you would work in our hearts and souls by the power of your Holy Spirit and by your grace that we might show that wonderful fruit of the Spirit, uh, which is to be peaceful um, and to be peace-loving people. So Lord, help us in this and may we be an example that shine out in the world um, and make the kingdom of God attractive to people when they see that we are at peace when so much of the world is at war. Help us in these things, Lord. Forgive us our sins where we've fallen short. And in the week ahead and what remains of the week until we gather once again, would you keep and preserve your people? Would you watch over and strengthen them? Bless them, we pray. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, people of God, it's been good to spend this time with you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Until we meet again.